Thanks for showing up. My name is Valerian Bennett. I'm a founder and CEO of PopChest. Uh, and we are reimagining video. So imagine online video with no ads and no subscriptions. So the way that we're doing it is a combination of micropayments, which are direct contributions, so you can directly support the content creators that you love, and an incentive token, which, and this is really the core uh, belief of PopChest. We believe that the people who make up the network should be the ones that share in the value that they're creating. So rather than all of us creating value and having that get sucked up into basically two giant corporations, Facebook and Google, what if we could all contribute and then share in the value that we create based on our contribution? So a uh, little bit about me. So I'm originally uh, from Silicon Valley, so I'm a nerd at heart, uh, but I spent my career as a filmmaker. So live in Los Angeles, uh, Santa Monica, California. Uh, did the last 10 years or so as a network television editor. Uh, and once I saw the potential of this technology, basically, like most of you, I just took the pill and went down the hole, and here, here we are. Uh, my partner, Ariel Barmat, he is from Buenos Aires, Argentina. Uh, and if you've heard of Decentraland, uh, Streamium, um, uh, Open Zeppelin, uh, there's a very tight-knit community, and he literally works in the same office as, uh, as all of those projects. Uh, and he's also not too far from Rootstock, which I'll get to, get to in a minute. So the, uh, uh, Ariel and I, we actually uh, were at the Boost VC Accelerator. Uh, at the end of last year, so we were Boost Tribe 8, and coming out of that, uh, we were able to, uh, to get an investment from a uh, Huyen blockchain group, uh, blockchain venture, which is the biggest uh, blockchain group investing out of China. Uh, so how many of you have heard of Pop Chess before? Okay, a few. So, yeah, so we've pretty much been keeping our, our head down. So, We've taken uh, an alternate development route, right? So most of the projects that you've probably heard of, uh, they make a big announcement, and they spend quite a bit of time building this whole whatever it is that they're building. Uh, and then what inevitably happens is you get to a point where you've built this complicated thing, and now you have to force users to use what you've built as opposed to being responsive to what your users actually want. So we went the opposite direction. We built our video infrastructure, and really for the last half year, we've just been working with content creators, um, asking the questions, what do you want, knowing what we know about blockchain and Bitcoin and all the things that we can do, and then reflecting that back to them. So a lot of the things that we thought were super important at the beginning, turns out not so important. And things that we didn't even think of because we had actual people using our system Turns out we created a whole bunch of stuff that we never would have from the beginning. So that sort of roundabout route is starting to pay off for us. So once we closed our pre-seed round, we worked on our video infrastructure. And then you can see in March, we started our content creator outreach program. Uh, and in the last few months, we basically 10 x our content creator growth. So this is a big educational process, right? You're talking to artists, you're talking to creators, you're talking to filmmakers who couldn't tell you a smart contract from anything else that they might be thinking of. They really don't care. But when you start to explain some of the benefits, how it can help them, how to get paid, now you're getting people interested. So it's a process, but you're starting to see not only content creators come on board, but starting in August, you're gonna to start to see on Pop Chest top creators from YouTube, from Facebook, from Instagram, who've started to build the library of content, migrate, migrate their fans over to, over to Pop Chest. So we can't announce the names just yet, but watch this space. August is gonna be super exciting for us. So we've got the microtransactions working, right? Direct capital inflow, I want to watch something here, take my money. Uh, from there though, we're thinking, okay, well, it doesn't make sense for us 
to just kind of go and recreate what already exists. Okay, we're gonna swap out Google and put PopChest in there and then we'll recreate the, the same thing. New boss, same as, same as the old. Doesn't make any sense. So we're actually cutting ourselves out of the payment process, which sounds ridiculous, but it makes a lot more sense because if you don't have to trust the, the person in the middle, that actually allows you a certain amount of freedom, right? If you're making something and you know that you're going to get it and it's not going to be at the whim of some arbitrary invisible algorithm that says you get paid or not and oh, by the way, we're gonna keep your money if we don't actually give it to you, that's what we're building. So we're building a smart contract system based off of Rootstock. Uh, so if you don't know what Rootstock is, it's basically the Ethereum virtual machine built on top of the Bitcoin blockchain. So it's the complexity of transactions that you can have with Ethereum, but with the security of Bitcoin. Uh, so if any of you happen to be in Barcelona in a few weeks for uh, Coin Agenda, uh, and immediately after that, there's the Barcelona uh, blockchain meetup, my CTO, Ariel Bermat, will actually be there, and he's gonna go deep, deep, deep into everything uh, involving our smart contract system from the building, the execution, uh, and you know, if you, if you guys wanna geek out on smart contracts, that's the, the place to go to. And from there, once we've got this system, the basics of it, which are, I want something, I would rather just throw a few cents to a content creator rather than being inundated and basically mind poison with advertising, then we can start to get really interesting. So that's where our token, our POP token comes into play. Going back to our original principle, which is that everyone who takes part in the network should share in the value of the network, now we can start making secondary transactions. Okay, we have piles of video that's being encoded. Who's got a spare computer? Why don't you run a pop chest node? We'll throw you a video, you encode it, put it back up to the network, you just earn pop tokens. Okay, what if you have, if you're watching a video and you have a, a plugin that's basically like a web torrent style plugin where you're actually serving the video to your peers in a peer to peer network. You're effectively working as the network. Here's tokens for that. What if you're just a viewer? What if you're just watching something? But now you like somebody and you watch 10 of their videos, right? Now you're, you're pretty much subsidizing and supporting that one person. Here, here's some tokens that reflect your valuable contribution to that particular artist. So it's another way, you know, we thought so many different ways of doing this and the, the whole boom in tokens, it's brought a lot of interesting sort of side effects as I'm sure we all know. But it's been great when we're starting to think about how do we incentivize positive contributions to any kind of network, and in our case, with PopChest and our video network. Uh, from there, you know, we go on to uh, managing identity and actually building out the peer-to-peer -peer network, but the initial part is to build an army, right, of people who want to see this type of thing succeed. I feel like for the most part, we've all wanted something like this to exist, and now we're at the point where we can actually make it. So why do it? And I think this sort of gets to probably the reason that I got into Bitcoin in the first place, which is, which is freedom. The idea of creating something for the sake of creating it, creating something for the fans that believe in you, as opposed to creating something to satisfy advertisers. And that leads down a whole crazy road which is kind of where we're at right now, right? Where it's just about screaming the loudest, getting the most eyeballs, and I'm not sure that's the best outcome for society. So if creators can actually create for the sake of creating and making this world a more beautiful and better place and all this stuff that I like to get uh, all hippie about, <laughs> that's, I think, a good thing for every, everyone. And ultimately, as long as we continue to have this advertising-supported system, Basically, we're all just material going through it, right? As the, the old saying is, if you're, not the, uh, if you're not paying for something effectively, you are the product, right? So if we don't want to continue to do that, then we have to make an effort to change it. And finally, with the technology that we have at hand, we can actually change it. Uh, so with us, go to popchest.com. Uh, we're in beta right now. Go ahead, sign up. Uh, if you're more interested in the development, 
uh, stuff, check out Slack uh, or slack.popchest.com. Uh, uh, and this is, uh, before we get into the token sale, which will probably happen in September, there actually is a way for you to start earning tokens right now. You can earn your way onto the platform, uh, and that is my tease for you to go to blog.popchest.com. Uh, and with that, I will, I suppose, open it up to the floor. Exactly. Thanks. Thanks, uh, Valerian. I, I really like the topic of having the content providers, the publishers, earn some money, right? Because of the usage of the end uh, consumer. So, so I, I, I open the floor for, for questions to, uh, to Valerian. Sure. Oh, she's got a microphone there. Uh, you showed microtransactions, yeah. and I assume you mentioned like even liking something or watching a content ten times from a viewer. That is a tiny transaction, like really micro, right? How do you deal with transaction fees? It's like so little that because I'm also working on something for a client, and he wants micro transactions, truly like tens of a cent. Just for a basically. Sure. But the fees are always more than the, the amount he wants to give. Yeah. That's all from the, the, the rooftop? Sure. So two things that we're looking at right now that we're a few steps down the line. One is actually Lightning Network. Um, being in Los Angeles, uh, I get to go up to, to San Francisco quite a bit. So I've kept my, my pulse on, uh, finger on the pulse of that for, for quite some time. And, we actually run Bitcoin nodes, which doesn't directly get to that, but uh, the interaction between that and, and Lightning, there's a route to go that way. Um, Rootstock also has something called the Lumino network, which is effectively their version of, of Lightning network. So um, a certain amount of it is beyond our control, right? And we don't need to get into the, you know, the big arguments that are, are happening right now, but there's a certain amount that we can control in anticipation of something will happen, right? The stalemate that we were in at some point will move forward and we want to be ready for that moment. But, but there will be a transaction fee a little bit at least, right? Relatively, yeah. I mean, it's going, there's going to be, yeah. So the initial way we're actually kind of skirting around it um, is if we're able to get our token in place is effectively give you the transaction fee to, to ultimately pay your way onto the system. So it, it doesn't burden you as a new no, user. Yeah, make the fee um, payable by someone. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. That's what I'm thinking for my, my question yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah, so. Some issues just pay okay. Yeah, and if you think of that cost as a customer acquisition cost, the marketing cost. It would be, it would be, if everyone could get a customer for that amount, yeah, I'm sure they would be very happy about that. Yeah. yeah. There's a question in the back. Hi, did you mention your peg to Bitcoin? Uh, Jake one? Right. Your peg to Bitcoin with Rootstock. And if so, uh, how do you manage the fact that it's extremely volatile? So if I want to sell some content for, let's say, $10 today, tomorrow maybe it's worth five. Sure, so the simplest way to answer it without getting too far into the, the stuff, that the technical parts that we're going to be developing is you think of it like any other financial transaction, right? So if you're, exposed to whatever uh, pork bellies uh, and you want to account for volatility, at some point you're going to have to hedge that, right? Um, so we haven't actually built that part out, but philosophically that's how we're thinking of it, which is well, however much money is floating around on the system, it has to be hedged so that by the time you put your money in to the time you get it out, your relative value is going to be, to be the same. Of course, there's going to be fluctuation, but philosophically, that's how we're thinking of it. Okay. Gentleman there in the back. Yeah. Way in the back. So, um, you're going to do an ICO in September. Will that be on the Ethereum blockchain or on the stock? If, if it's on Ethereum, when will you migrate and why will you migrate? Because you're moving from a decentralized blockchain to a sidechain that is guaranteed by a bunch of 
Bitcoin companies by the way have it better. Yeah, so the, I think the, the, the feedback that we get from Rootstock is it's going to be ready when it's ready. Uh, I'm sure you probably, if you've been following the project, uh, that's pretty much their, their MO. So it's just going to be, as they, they say in sports, a, a game time decision, right? Which is to say, um, if we can get A, we'll take A. If B is available, then we'll work with B. And ultimately, the, the most important thing for us regardless of the technology, and, and this is, I know it's kind of hard to say and hard to hear when talking to a bunch of technologists, which is to say that to a certain degree, you're, it's, all gonna, it's all gonna be in flux, right? Bitcoin today is completely different than Bitcoin was three months ago, which is completely unidentifiable from Bitcoin a year ago. So for us, the important thing is to be able to maintain enough flexibility that as long as we're meeting the goals of the project, we're flexible in how we implement that particular, that particular piece. Um, and the, the sort of personal way I think about it is uh, a lot of the stuff that we're doing, it's sort of modeled around, you know, one of the, the icons that I have in my head is uh, uh, Netflix, right, ironically enough. Um, but Reed Hastings, who is the, the CEO and founder of, of Netflix, you know, they called their company Netflix when they were sending DVD through, through the mail. Right, it was like seven years until they actually delivered internet movies. But they had the vision of where they wanted to go and they just jimmied the technology enough to get to where they needed to be. Um, so we're flexible in how we implement it. Ultimately, we know where we want to go and it's just a matter of making sure that we get there. I think we have time for one short question. There. Dueling questions. Uh, are you only able, as a consumer, to see the videos if you pay? Initially, right now, right? So that's the sort of step one level. But if you think about it, we're, we're talking about the token, we're trying to create a way for you to earn your way onto the platform, right? So um, if you're doing something that benefits the network, we're going to reward you with tokens that will then allow you to pay, right? So you re reward the uh, maker of the content and not the other content makers reward the content makers. You uh, do that. Ask me that question again. Do you sure reward the content makers or do other users do that? In this case, it would, be, it would be both. So step one is to viewers reward the content creator directly. So that's okay, step one. Because what, what's your uh, special value um, in comparing, uh, comparing to... Uh, Steam, Steam it. You know Steam? Sure. Uh, as far as I know, there's no direct capital inflow for, on, on Steam, if, unless somebody wants to correct me for that. So there's no way for a viewer to pay a content creator uh, directly for, for something. Yeah, yeah, it is. If I or I mean, in terms of just like straight cash money, that sort of thing, right? Okay, yeah, but I can... I can buy that trade money on, a, on another market like Poloniex or something, so and I can pay with that in that uh, platform. So. Right. So there's the there's that way of doing it. But if you think of if I understand your correct question correctly, and I want to make sure I'm I'm getting to it, um, I think the difference is let's say for example we've had a movie called uh, Bitcoin: The End of Money, right? Which is a documentary. Um, uh, Thorsten uh, Hoffman. Uh, and I think he charged you know, $4.99 to watch, watch the movie, um, which is a, a pretty standard transaction, except that, of course, he's getting paid in, in real time with, with Bitcoin. Um, so I think, if I understand Steam correctly, it doesn't really allow you to, to do that kind of transaction, if that addresses your question. Yeah, I'm sorry, I didn't hear what you said since that's the person. <laughs> Thank you very much. We'll afterwards. I'll be around. Yeah. Let's do it in the break and have a discussion on yeah, Steam it and, 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 and sure. the resemblance. Awesome. Thank you guys so much. You guys have such an awesome meet up here.